So this talk will be a performance and security optimization talk. And uh, as you can obviously see from the title, we'll try to assemble a performance and security toolbox for both MySQL and MariaDB. And this talk will also be applicable to Percona server. And I will start with the fact that performance optimization talk, because in this talk, what we aim to do is we aim to optimize performance when you have a lot of data. So let's say 10 billion records, maybe 20 billion records or even more. So if you have a lot of data, this is the talk for you. So to begin with, I would like to pick your brains a little bit. Uh, on the screen right now, you can see two queries. Uh, the concept behind those two queries is there are full text queries, as you probably already know. And if you run MySQL 5.7, one of those queries will time out or crash your server, and one of those queries will run just as usual. It's actually a bug in MySQL 5.7. 5 and uh, we have actually discussed this concept within uh, some of the members in this room. And we came to a conclusion, the reason why MySQL does that is because kind of full text indexes are kind of their own internal world, world in and of itself. And the reason why it times out is because I'm not sure if you can see, but we have in the second query, we have an ETA sign. We are searching for an email address, which has an ETA sign. And the ETA sign makes the query timeout. As, as stupid as that may sound, it's, that's, that's the case. So now that you have a concept, a taste of the stock, what's coming through. So I should probably introduce myself because you're probably wondering who is this guy on the on scene. So I write database stuff, I write security stuff. I run Rich Directory, which is a, a data breach search engine, which lets you search for your email address, whether, whether it has been exposed in a data breach. I blog about databases, about security, I blog a lot. I actually have to visualize the red gates pretty much everywhere. <laughs> And they're on a database YouTube channel. And also found the bug that we just discussed. So that's very great. So now we get into the talk. So we're going to go through performance basics, that MySQL engines, and then how to optimize schema and data types for bigger data sets, how to optimize your tables, your databases for big data in general, and uh, how to take backups of big data sets because MySQL dump will not work. And we're then going to go through some advanced features and some interesting features and some bugs as well. And then finally, we have tools to help you improve your database performance. So very great. So we're starting from the bottom. And to optimize your databases for big data, you obviously have to know the bare basics of performance. So obviously, everybody knows that. But we still have to start here. So first thing you have to do is you have to configure your service via MyCNF. You have to optimize you know, the B storage engine. You have to only search what you need. So the less data you search through, the faster your queries get. That's very, very obvious. You should probably use InnoDB, which is the primary storage engine offered by MySQL, because it's ACID compliant, and it can also be twisted in ways that you probably didn't know were possible. We're going to get there in a second. And last thing you have to do is you follow performance best practices, right? You follow normalization, indexing, partitioning, if you need to, whatever. So the first thing to do is to choose a storage engine that runs big data sets. So this is where you have a couple of choices. The most obvious and the most uh, probably primary choice would you, could be InnoDB or ExtraDB. In some cases, you may be able to use MySAM, but MySAM should only be used if you have are a very big table that you want uh, the row count to. So basically, since MySAM stores an internal row count and InnoDB does not, count queries will obviously complete much faster than InnoDB, but that's the only use case of MySAM these days. <laughs> and yeah, so now we get into optimizing the schema. Now I would like to firstly mention there's no need to innovate. There's nothing very new that you need to do here. There's nothing like revolutionary that you need to do. Stick to simple data types. As simple as you can get, the simpler the better. Uh, index what you need to. Index your select queries. Obviously, keep in mind that indexes slow down updates and obviously bleeds. Uh, normalize your tables. Obviously, if you have a lot of data, normalization helps. And uh, partition. 
So partitioning again, it takes space on the disk, but it makes your select queries faster. Now, uh, first interesting thing is you can enable the SQL mode strict trans tables for automated truncation of data. So if you're inserting data and you need it to be automatically truncated without errors, this is what you can do. Um, you should probably avoid text data type because not because it's a bad data type, but because it uh, takes a lot of space on the disk. And the more data you have, the more space it will take, obviously. Um, obviously, you should switch it to char or varchar. But if you switch it to varchar, you should keep in mind that it takes data, obviously, as well. So it takes the length of bytes of your data plus one or two bytes, uh, whatever. So if you have tens of billions of records, obviously, it adds up very quickly. So this is something you have to keep in mind. Next thing you have to do after you decided on how to optimize your schema, you have to optimize the database for big data as well. The first thing I have to mention here is that insert queries will probably will not work, not in the case that will crash the server, but in the case that it will take just a lot of time and you probably don't have enough time to just insert and build records into your database. So you switch insert queries to low data in files. The reason why is because insert queries have a lot of overhead in and of themselves and low data in file, it skips all of that overhead and lets you insert data. And if you insert data with low data in file, you can insert it in bulk and you can use the buffer pool to MySQL's advantage and your files will be significantly smaller than if you would have 10 billion insert records in them, insert queries in them, yeah. So load it in file in and of itself has a couple of options. You can specify a character set. You can specify what your fields are terminated by, what character, which probably this is the primary option you will use probably, what lines are terminated by, and so on. And if you use partitions, you most likely you will use partitioning by range. So this is a very basic example, but it may will work depending on what you're building. So if you're building a search engine, for example, if you search for accounts, if you, for example, search for data that has um, letters or numbers, if, even if you have like tens of billions of records, this, this kind of partitioning setup will most likely work as long as you have the same partitions for all of your tables you're querying so that your queries are quick. Um, actually, don't forget that you can um, use a max value for the partitions. Max value is basically anything that's not specified. So if you want to have a partition specifically for like other values, so this is what you can do. Now, the other thing you have to notice is that big data sets are very different thing than ordinary data sets and they work differently. Uh, they make my skill work kind of differently as well. Uh, first thing you have to notice is alter table functionality and you have to keep in mind the space you have on the disk because alter table how it works for those who are not aware of it is that it makes a copy of the table on the disk it reinserts the data and then it swaps the two tables that you need to alter right so that means that if you have like a table that's like 100 gigabytes in size and you use an alter table on it you have additional 100 gigabytes in size of of uh, the disk like it will take additional 100 gigabytes in the disk and if you run out of space your query will obviously not complete uh, the next thing is you can sometimes use the default clause as an update clause now what i mean by this is that if you create tables and you use a load data in file to load data into these tables so that you load data in a bulk fashion a quick fashion you can actually specify a default clause for some of the, your columns so that you don't have to run update queries after your data has been inserted. So let's say if you have a column that you know all of those values in that column will be X. So you can specify the default value of X when creating that column and then insert data excluding that column with a load data in file. You should probably use UTF-8 MB4 instead of UTF-8. For those who don't know why, it's because UTF-8 in MySQL is not really UTF-8 because it's only supporting three bytes per character, if I remember correctly, while UTF-8 MD4 supports four. And actually, you can use alter algorithm instance to instantly add columns to MariaDB tables as of MariaDB 10.3.2, as you can see here. So that's very 
useful as well. Uh, now to back up the data, now it's a different thing as well, because if you have billions of records, MySQL dump will likely will not work as well, because not in the sense that it will, will not work, will crush your server, but again, it takes logical backups. So it takes insert queries as it backups insert queries to basically rebuild the data. And insert queries is something that you again want to avoid because insert queries, again, they come with overhead and you want to switch them to just data itself. So the first plus of doing this is that obviously your file is smaller because it doesn't concern, it doesn't um, have uh, insert queries in them so much. And the second thing, it will, MySQL will uh, obviously load data faster. So basically what you do to take backups is you create a script that uh, has select all into out file queries and loops through all of your tables. And then you have the backup. This is the most likely, most fastest scenario that you can use, I think. And obviously to restore that, you can use load data in file so that it will be restored quickly. Now, advanced features, as I can, as I said already, you can use a default as an update sometimes when you're loading data into your tables. And uh, if you have to, if you're in a situation where you have like uh, 15 billion records and you need to remove duplicates out of those records, you can use a unique index, right? Because it will work, but it will not work again as quickly as it should because you have billions of records and MySQL obviously has to deal with them. So what I would suggest is you use the sort option in in Linux. It has a unique flag, so basically the you thing, and you specify your data, where your data is, and then the output file. And basically the sort uh, with a unique flag, it will remove all of the duplicates out of the file, and then you can use um, load data in file to load those this data in, which is very great because it takes a uh, little time to do that. If you have to use insert, uh, insert queries, you can also use insert ignore to ignore all of the errors posed by um, you, for example, not having enough columns that you insert in or whatever. And you can also, if you need to, you can delete data according to time periods by using proportion of time period as shown here. And you also need to remember that if you need to delete all of the rows in a table, truncate is significantly faster than delete. And you can, if you're using InnoDB, you can obviously uh, use a query uh, explain plan and then kill queries if necessary with the kill query if they take a lot of time. Now, uh, tools to optimize database performance in this way is probably the first tool will be you because you know your database most than you know uh, better than everybody else. So. If you follow the advice that I gave you, you should probably be uh, good to go. If you are uh, after tools that help you optimize your performance, your security, there is MariaDB secure installation, of course, MySQL secure installation that helps secure your installation. There's the slow query log, which you can use to obviously um, have an insight into your slow queries. There's N MySQL Enterprise Edition, where you can use the firewall if you want to, or other things. And there's also tools like SQL clients like DB Visualizer or Archetype. There's Redgate Monitor, which helps you uh, monitor your database instances. There's Cluster Control, there's also a database monitoring tool, and so on. So now we have a bunch of interesting stuff. So uh, does anybody know what the Schrodinger's paradox is? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so Schrodinger's paradox is basically a thing that does exist but does not exist at the same time. So the concept of uh, this thing in databases is that you may have a situation where you have, um, let's say, where you're inserting data, your electricity goes out, and then you want to drop that table that you insert the data in. MySQL will show that table in a show tables query, but if you try to drop that table, it will say this table does not exist. So what do you do then? <laughs> what do you do then? Uh, the most uh, easiest solution is to grab a um, different MySQL instance, just to recreate the structure of the table, and then grab the FRM file, and then just copy and paste it to your real server. And this is how the problem is solved. So I hope you enjoyed this talk. I hope it helped you a little bit. You know, I hope uh, you, it was interesting for you. 
and I am done to answer questions if you have anything for me. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>